Hello, and welcome to Polish Raven. We look into cases from all over the world and those a little closer to home. Today, we're looking into the disappearance and murder of Helen McCourt. Helen McCourt was born the 29th of July, 1965, in Bootle, Merseyside, to William and Marie McCourt. She was a warm, friendly young woman who worked as an insurance clerk, and her story is one that changed how murder investigations are done in the UK. It was the 9th of February, 1988, and 22-year-old Helen had called her mother at around 4pm shortly before she was due to leave her workplace. She was planning on going out for the evening with her new boyfriend and wanted her dinner earlier so she could have time to wash her hair. The weather was bad that evening, and when Helen didn't show up when she usually did, Marie assumed that was because of the bad weather that the buses were a bit delayed, but Helen still didn't arrive home. Her bus stop was only a short walk from her home, so at this point Marie was getting worried and a search of the area showed no sign of her. Helen had apparently left the bus at approximately 5.30pm and was never seen again. About two days before her disappearance, Helen had been involved in an argument at her local pub, the Georgian Dragon. According to her family and friends, Helen wasn't the sort to get into fights with random women. This fight resulted in the landlord, Ian Sims, to ban Helen from the pub, and according to witnesses, he had used obscene language towards her and had described how much he hated her. Sims had also made sexual advances towards Helen, which she had rejected. Apparently, Helen knew about his affair with a 21-year-old and was gossiping about it. Helen's walk home that night would have taken her past the pub. Marie and others think that she must have seen or been called over by Sims to discuss the recent incident and to see about her being able to come to the pub again. Within minutes of getting off the bus and walking home, a man getting off another bus heard a loud scream coming from the direction of the pub that was cut short. When Helen was reported missing and a police investigation was launched, Sims was interviewed and became a suspect immediately due to his extremely nervous demeanour during interviews. His car was impounded and examined by a forensic scientist who found traces of Helen's blood. It was found on the rubber sill of the boot and on the boot carpet. They also found an opal and pearl earring, which Marie had given her daughter on her 21st birthday and confirmed Helen had been wearing them the day she vanished. Traces of Helen's blood were also found in Sim's flat, on the carpet at the foot of the stairs leading up to his flat, on a bedroom carpet, on wallpaper in his bedroom, and finally on the wallpaper next to the door leading to his flat. This is where police believe the attack started. Signs of something being dragged on the carpet were also noticed and further forensics found fibres from Helen's navy trousers were found on the stairs carpet, landing carpet and bedroom carpet, proving that Sims had dragged her upstairs after attacking her. A witness described dragging noises from above at the time of the murder. In March, Helen's handbag, coat, maroon scarf, navy trousers and green mittens were found on a river bank in Earlham, about 20 miles away in a black bin bag which later proved to be from the Georgian Dragon. Also found in the bin bag was a length of electrical flex. This was similar to the type found in Sim's flat, which he used when playing with his dogs. The flex found also had dog teeth marks in them that were matched to his dogs. There was also human hair caught in the flex, which was later identified as Helen's by using samples obtained from her hair rollers. Police believe that the flex was used to strangle Helen. A man came forward to say that he had found on the morning of Helen's disappearance a bloodstained towel while walking his dog along the Manchester Ship Canal in Holland's Green, Warrington. He later found another towel along with bloodstained men's clothing. The blood was later confirmed as Helen's. The jumper had a logo for Labatt, a popular beer brand sold at the Georgian Dragon. Sims originally denied these being his, but later confessed to belonging to him. During his 1989 trial, Sims denied the murder of Helen, insisting that someone must have broken into his flat, stolen his clothes, and then attacked and murdered Helen without him knowing. This person then stole his car and left his clothes there to incriminate him. The jury, of course, did not believe this far-fetched story and convicted him of murder. Sims is one of the first people to be convicted based on forensic evidence alone, with no body being discovered. Of course, without Helen's body, police had to use DNA from her parents to confirm the blood was indeed Helen's. In 1999, Sims challenged the DNA, but failed as the blood not being Helen's was a million to one. Sims was given a life sentence with a minimum of 16 years. In a cruel twist, he refuses to reveal where Helen is or admit any guilt. Marie has devoted her life to the support after murder and manslaughter, and continues to pressure Sims into revealing where Helen is. Marie wants to bury her daughter and have a place to visit her, as currently Helen has a bench in the St. Mary's Church that was installed to mark her 43rd birthday. In October of 2013, police revealed a tip that Helen's body had been placed in an open grave before its burial, but sadly, the tip was wrong. Marie launched a campaign in December of 2015 to change the law regarding murderers who won't disclose the location of their victims to be denied parole. 
In May 2019, the UK's Ministry of Justice confirmed that Helen's law would be going into effect. On the 21st of November 2019, it was announced before the new law could be adopted, the parole board on the 8th of November had recommended Sims for parole, citing he had met his terms for release. The bill to introduce Helen's law was delayed due to the 2019 general election. After learning of her daughter's killer's release, Marie pleaded with the government to introduce the law, and in February 2020, Helen's family bid to the High Court to keep Sims in jail was sadly refused, and Sims was released on licence after spending 32 years in prison. Marie McCourt revealed that three years after her daughter's murder, Sims sent her a letter. In the disturbing letter, Marie claims that he wrote, The Lord says, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. Call your family off now, before it's too late. He also allegedly wrote, Tell Michael, who is Helen's brother, I'll see him and where he likes. I cannot forgive you and yours. Marie says that she will never release the full contents of the letter, but has never thrown it away. In June 2022, it was revealed that Ian Sims had died at the age of 66. Marie said, It's a huge relief to me knowing that this man has finally been wiped off the face of the earth. He got what he deserved. I'm hoping now that maybe he spoke to somebody in prison, or maybe one of his friends or family who were perhaps too scared to come forward when he was alive will do so now. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your friends. And don't forget to give us a follow on social media so you'll be up to date on what we post. We hope to see you next time.